with an executive leaving WWE and the company having no plans for Triple H's return to NXT. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for January 28th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With him recently acknowledging that he is re-signed with WWE, Sami Zayn was talked about in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter as Dave Meltzer noted Zayn's WrestleMania 38 pitch to the company. He also noted pitching an idea to work a program with Jeff Hardy, but then Hardy was fired. I had spoken with Creative about a storyline with Jeff Hardy. Jeff was one of my heroes when I was a teenager. He was one of my biggest inspirations when I started. My idea was to have a ladder match against him at WrestleMania. I had a big storyline planned in my head. Head. But unfortunately, two weeks after speaking with Creative about it, he was fired. Now, Zayn looks to be in a feud with Jackass star Johnny Knoxville. Also, in The Observer, the rumor of Sami Zayn going to AEW was talked about, with it said that regarding Zayn signing, the actual timeline is that he agreed to terms was when they started pushing him with the Battle Royal win and working on TV with Lesnar and Reigns. But the actual signing of the contract took place at the start of the year. Both he and Owens are believed to be signed through early 2025. Unlike with Owens, where AEW was at least teased by him and the Young Bucks on social media at one point, he made the call to stay because it was the right thing for his family and got the great offer. Coming from amateur wrestling backgrounds, the Creed brothers recently had a dark match for SmackDown and are a part of a feud on NXT with Imperium. Meltzer noted that WWE sees these two as future main event stars. WWE management is very high on the Creed brothers. I believe Julius has picked up pro wrestling tremendously and is very smart. There are internal comparisons being made of Julius and Kurt Angle when he started, having seen both at the same stage. Angle was well ahead overall in pretty much every facet. The idea in internally is that both will at some point be WrestleMania headliners, which is the internal term used for big guys that they think have potential is that they can be WrestleMania headliners. Julius was a training partner of Daniel Cormier at AKA the last few years before he signed with WWE. Guys the size of Punk or Danielson no matter how good are never talked of in that way, even though Danielson himself has done so and Punk was in big matches and could have at one point. There is also talk of putting more Raw in SmackDown town on NXT to build ratings like what Styles did. Even though he's 39, company officials are very high right now on LA Knight. As of a few weeks ago, he was slated for a main roster spot in the spring after WrestleMania. That may be sped up since he's already taped a backstage confrontation with Rude and Ziggler. Roderick Strong, Pete Dunne, and Tommaso Ciampa are still in the plans by the company for NXT. Management is also high on Von Wagner and Zion Quinn, based on their look and size, and are very forgiving of their NXT experience in the ring, hoping they will pick things up in time. With WWE sending out a representative to negotiate with Ronda Rousey regarding a return to the company, this has many thinking that the former UFC champion could be coming back for the Royal Rumble. This could even lead to a match with Becky Lynch, as The Observer pointed out. There have been WrestleMania plans that include Becky Lynch versus Rousey that have been discussed internally. We have not confirmed her for the Rumble, but PW Insider did report her makeup woman is booked for both the Rumble in St. Louis and Raw two days later in Cincinnati. While Randy Orton has been known to have attitude issues in his youth, he told the Ring of Wrestling show that his wife helped him become a better person. I think being a father changed me. I think my wife kinda had a lot to do in opening my eyes. But it's been a group effort. You're definitely correct. I think there's a lot of different reasons for that. Just, you know, learning from your mistakes is one of them. You know, every once in a while, there'd be a cameraman or a lighting guy that's been us for as long as I've been with the company. And they'll be like, remember that time and think it was 05 when you did blah, 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 blah. And then they'll 
don't proceed to tell a story in front of a group of people that just paints me in the worst light and it's embarrassing. It's like, man, I was an asshole. Following his release from WWE, many have been wondering what is next for Jeff Hardy. His brother Matt has talked about a Hardy Boys reunion as they'll be making an appearance for Big Time Wrestling together in March. Fans would like to see the two team up in AEW, yet WWE does not want that happening according to the Wrestling Observer. There is a feeling right now that this is one guy they don't want in AEW because of the realization the Hardy Boys will be revitalized as an act. Given the level of teams like the Young Bucks, FTR, Santa Cannon Ortiz, Penton Phoenix, and so many others. Hardy is still under contract with WWE through March 9th, so AEW can make a legal offer to him, but the belief is that unless he goes back to WWE, which at this point doesn't look like it will happen, he would be AEW bound. After his WWE release, there was news of Jeff Hardy turning down rehab as The Observer provided more details on that and on Hardy rejecting an offer to be put in the Hall of Fame. John Laurinaitis called Jeff Hardy to get him back a few weeks ago, including an offer to put him in the 2022 Hall of Fame class. Hardy turned it down and asked for his drug test results because he knew he wasn't going to test positive for recreational drugs. It took Hardy and his wife six weeks to get the results back. This would cause the charismatic enigma to trend on Twitter with many reacting to this report. See, that's the problem. WWE always pushes people to that legend role or Hall of Fame role when they aren't done yet. That's always the problem and Jeff Hardy ain't done yet. Him and Matt gotta take the AEW Tag Championships. Proud of Jeff Hardy. Doesn't need to be in the Hall of Fame. I literally sat and watched a compilation of his for a good 20 minutes last night absolutely fried. Couldn't touch the remote. Work speeds for itself. Forget Vince and WWE. Know your work. In terms of titles, Jeff Hardy has earned a solo spot in the Hall of Fame, but he started his career with his brother, who was under a different name when he wrestled Razor, so I imagine that's how he wants to end it. Sorry, but you can't fault the man for that. Jeff Hardy was fired by WWE. I am yet to see a single shred of evidence of any wrongdoing on his part, and I've been digging the whole time. Why on earth would he want to come back? Even further, why would WWE want him back if they thought he was under the influence? I take very little of what the dirt sheets say to heart, but damn it man, this ain't right of WWE to do to Jeff Hardy. Give this man his results, apologize for making an ass out of yourselves if needed, move on, and don't jump to conclusions. With WWE looking to improve NXT, there could be a plan to bring in more independent wrestlers as The Observer gave details on this, noting that another idea being talked about is bringing in outside talent, like was the original idea that brought in Johnny Gargano, Samoa Joe, and Champa, signed them to six-week contracts and work programs with the younger guys, and that those guys would not be exclusive and could still work indies. Of course, the last time they did that, immediately they didn't like the guys on their TV were working indies, but NXT was in competition at the time with Ring of Honor. NXT 2.0 was supposed to have an emphasis on larger stars with legitimate athletic backgrounds, but that could be going out the window for the time being. Speaking of NXT, fans are curious when Triple H will return to running the brand following his absence due to a cardiac event and subsequent surgery. Apparently this is not on the company's mind with the Observer saying that there are no plans right now, or even if Paul Levesque will return to running NXT or for him to do any creative in the company due to health issues. Obviously if his health improves and he wants to, that could change, but the word is that it's not anything people have been told is happening imminently, but they are very happy with Shawn Michaels right now. Feeling He's been under pressure to make stars fast with the changes in the show, and he made Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Knight, Grayson Waller, and Tony D'Angelo into stars very quickly. It was noted that was not his job when he was hired, but it fell upon him when Levesque had his health issue, and they feel he has great aptitude for the creative process and understanding of how to make stars and make key people stand out.
Joining WWE 12 years ago as an administrative assistant, Amanda Tustin, a WWE network executive, is apparently done with the company according to PW Insider. With no reason at this time for her departure, the duties of her job have been listed on her Instagram. Oversee WWE in operations and scheduling teams and execution of responsibilities, including VOD and linear aspects. Influence the development and execution of all international WWE EN partnerships, ensuring delivery of daily, weekly, and monthly content requirements. Identify, develop, and streamline WWE EN content delivery workflows to ensure maximum efficiency. Liaise with multiple officers to grow and improve processes, productivity, and efficiency across teams, including data management and content delivery system upgrades, changes, and improvements. Successfully oversaw the launch of WWE and Peacock Content Partnership, ensuring 14K plus hours of content and metadata were delivered for launch within six months. Manage all ongoing deliveries, live events, and problem solving. Despite him and his faction being previously cut from the company, Top Dollar spoke with John Alba about his passion for music and wrestling, where he revealed that he could make a return to WWE. I am very capable of doing a wrestling role for anybody's company that wants me. That's not hard to do. I can do it two days a week or ten days a week. It's up to you. Do I think I'm done with WWE forever? No. Just from some personal conversations I've had with people, I don't. Do I think that I need to focus on myself right now? Absolutely. To be honest with you, I've been focusing on myself my whole life, so that isn't anything new. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.